Hi, people who are already here, say hello. All right, so I got a new projector, and it works even with the light on. This is so much better. Hi, Tia. Hi, Dante.
Mm. Hey, Jay. I don't know who that person is under you. Hey, Lewis. Oh, hi, Ashley. Hi, Will. So those of you who have not been on the first 10 minutes, I kind of just say hello. Does anybody have any questions about your grade, how it's calculated, all of that kind of stuff before I start notes for this week? Can everybody see the screen finally? All of that kind of stuff? Oh, hey, Gloria. Hey, come on. Didn't see you. Sorry. All right, so I'm assuming everybody's good. Briefly, I want to tell you that week one, there were still a lot of people who did not log on to Big Ideas and do the homework. Again, it works really awkward on your phone and or tablet. I tried several times on my tablet as well. So if you don't have a full computer to access, please let me know. Um, I will provide other assignments if you need it. However, the other assignments will be longer because there aren't as many attempts, right? So Big Ideas allows you to attempt it five times. So you'll have about three times as much paperwork if I give you paperwork in order to match the attempts that it takes for Big Ideas. Um, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to also make sure that there is a quiz up there on Google Classroom, like I did another replacement quiz. Only do a replacement quiz if you cannot log on because it is more for me to grade. And I know that that shouldn't be a big deal, but it is because I'm working twice as hard just like you are. The marking period technically ends at the end of this week. I believe teachers are putting grades in until the, in the next week. I think I'm only going to put this week's grade in um, and last week's grade in. So last week's grade, I already put in as a participation grade. It is as a test grade as well. I'm just not going to put it in to the end of this week. It will be 50% of the test grade last week, and then this week's grade will be 100% of the test grade. I also have your test that you took right before you left. I'm going to put those in. Um, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to average that yet. I think I'm going to do 50%. I feel like you guys didn't get to make the corrections and stuff like we should have. So I'm not going to count it completely like a whole test grade, but I am going to put that in as a test grade. I put in your weather graphs over the weekend. So if you didn't do them, I didn't put the zero in yet because it truly made you have an F if you didn't do it. Um, what else do I need to address? The, what's up? In half my time, I read um, Harry John and the other half, Black Clover. Yes. Um, and you can fill in the reading wall today. Um, I don't know, Ross. Okay, I'm going to start notes. Those of you who are new, how this works is, as I'm doing the notes, please ask your questions. You don't have to worry about interrupting me. <clears throat> it doesn't, so just ask it and it show up on the screen. I'll answer it when I take a breathing moment. Sorry. <coughs> I think that was a great skin. All right, so I'll answer it when I get a breathing moment, but ask the question. Don't wait until I go to the next slide or I erase the page, because then I have to rewrite it. It's not a smart board. It is my wall at home. This is a wall, not a smart board, not a whiteboard. It's a wall that I painted. Hey, Emily. So make sure that if you have a question, ask at that moment. <clears throat> I feel like, is that glass on the computer?
I might put the projector light. Okay, I'm going to start. Week two, the objective this week is to simplify rational functions. So that's what we were working with last week were rational functions. We started with um, the characteristics of rational functions. A lot of people still don't understand them. I get that. This is hard for everyone. I do want you to see this stuff. I know that a lot of classes are doing a lot of review. However, you guys are all going to pre-calc, whether it's next year or the year after. So I do want you to see this stuff. And that's why I'm giving you 50% of your grade is just participation compared to uh, me grading all your work like normal. <clears throat> but I do want you to see it. I don't want you to get through algebra two and not see any of these. And as of right now, we're definitely not going to school until May. So maybe it might even be, you know, later, but I, a whole month out, you need to see this. So things you need to remember. So things to keep in mind for notes today. The restrictions on the domain. That's going to be very important. Restrictions on the domain. That's where our bricks came in last week. We talked about asymptotes and holes in the graph, right? A couple people still didn't understand them. So it, it's as if I'm drawing a graph, right? So the same old linear graph, but then I stop for a moment and then I start again, okay? So that spot would be a hole in the graph. It's called a break, a hole, right? So that would be a restriction on the domain. That would mean the domain, instead of being all real numbers, it would be all real numbers except for this hole in the graph, okay? So make sure we focus on that. I'm going to show you how to find restrictions. We're going to talk about them a little bit more. Functions must be completely factored. That's another key point to remember, okay? If the function is not completely factored, you're not going to properly be able to find the restrictions, okay? And we're going to do a lot of simplifying. In order for you to simplify, everything needs to be factored. Remember when I said you had to know how to factor? It was a key thing to know from quadratics. Here is where it comes in. You have to know how to factor. You cannot divide fractions. Never, ever, ever can you divide fractions. That same rule applies when we talk about rational functions, right? Because rational functions are just rational factors. So you cannot divide them. Don't attempt to do it, ever. All right, so those are some key things to remember. <clears throat> All right, so the first time, ooh. All right, so the first kind of problems, this is a rational function, okay? And these are factors all being multiplied together. In order to simplify them, okay? Right? So we're simplifying. You wanna take them in parts. You wanna simplify just the numerical parts first. then all your x values, then your y values. So you wanna group them separately. So you want, I'm gonna just rewrite this and I'm gonna put a lot of space in between my numerical factors, my x factor, and my y's, okay? Because you wanna treat them separately, although they are one thing being multiplied together. So when I simplify 27 over nine, 27 divided by 9, hopefully we know that already, is 3. It goes on top because the numerator 3 over 1. And so if we remember, when we're dividing, we got to use rules of exponents. So I'm going to get x equals, neg is raised to the negative 1. It's negative. So if you remember the negative, you flip to the bottom and make it positive. So it's going to be x to the positive 1. And then y over y cancels itself out. So your final answer for this problem would be negative 3 over x. 
<clears throat> questions before I do more. All right. My dog is going to continue to bother us today. I don't know why. All right, so here are problems that were on your packet. I feel like this is really small. All right. Hopefully that's better. So the question, how is the X on the bottom? The X is on the bottom because the exponent was negative because it was X to the negative one. Other question, if it was positive, would it be on the numerator with negative three? Yes. So if it was positive, it would go to negative three. So we're going to do a couple more examples and hopefully you'll get, you'll see how those work. So here, now we have these numerical 18 over 27. So 18 over 27 can't be simplified as easy as 27 over 9. So now I have to simplify this fraction by dividing these both by a common factor. <clears throat> both their common factors 9. If I divide 18 by 9, I'm going to get 2. So if I divide this by 9... If I divide this by 9, 27 divided by 9 is 3. And so now I have my x values. So again, I'm going to use my rules of exponents. 6 minus 4 is going to give me x squared. And because that's positive, that 2 is positive, it's going to go on the top. So my final solution simplified would be 2x squared over 3. Hopefully that answers the question. Okay, gonna move on to another one. <clears throat> okay. So, problem three. Again, I'm going to break them all in parts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my numerical factors. Both 10 and 15 can be divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. Then I have my a. a to the third minus 1 is going to give me a squared. That exponent is positive, so it goes on top. And then I have my b factors. I have b to the 1 minus 3, so then I have b to the negative 2, and that's negative, so my b squared goes on the bottom. Get more like a 2, and so this would be my final answer. Now 
that answer your question on why and how the positive goes on top and the negative goes on the bottom? <clears throat> So the next type of rational function <clears throat> is when you have linear or quadratic factors in the numerator and the denominator. So the last one, those were just monomials. There was nothing added, subtracted, or needed to be factored before you can continue. Now you're going to have to factor before you continue. How to change from negative to positive. So rules of exponents, if we remember that when it is negative, you flip it and make it positive. Mm, I lost my marker. <clears throat> so I will find a video on rules of exponents and post it so that we have a review of rules of exponents. But if we remember... When the important rules to remember is when dividing <coughs> exponents, you're going to subtract them. When you are, when they're being multiplied, so when things are multiplied with exponents, You're going to add them. <clears throat> and whenever there's a negative exponent, you flip it. So if it is negative 2 over 3, you're going to flip it to the bottom. And if it was if the negative three was on the bottom, I'm let's make that negative two so it's the same. Then I'm gonna flip it to the top. <clears throat> so these are all rules of exponents to keep in mind. So it doesn't necessarily go in the denominator, it flips to where the opposite is. So yes, it goes in the denominator when you do a rational function because it's always going to start in the numerator. However, the, the rule applies differently if there was a negative that was already in the denominator, then you would flip it to the numerator. However, for most rational functions, it's in the numerator, and yes, you put it on the bottom. You put it in the denominator and make it positive. So again, I'm going to restate your question. The question was, if it is negative exponent, do you put it in the denominator and make it positive? For rational functions, the answer is yes, because it is 99% in the numerator. So if it is, for a rational function, a negative exponent, it's going to go in the denominator. All right. I'm going to leave that up in case anybody still needs to copy that um, or screenshot it, right? Can you do that with live? Don't ask me any type of questions. All right. So, however, when there is a linear and a quadratic, you have to factor before you can do anything. You also have to make sure it's written in standard form, which this is not. So, before I start, I'm going to write this in standard form. I don't know why this one is not. I hate it like this. And standard form just means my linear term comes first. And now I'm going to factor. So the first step, you always have to make sure it's in standard form. And then you have to make sure it's factored. Okay? So I can factor out a negative 3 on top, and I'm going to get x plus 2. And then I can factor the denominator to get <clears throat> x minus 2, x minus 4. 
Yep. And so there's nothing else that can be done here. This cannot be simplified. So you just leave it factored. This is a bad example. So this cannot be simplified, so you leave it factored. All right, so the rest of these are going to be in standard form already. And the first thing I'm gonna do is factor it. <clears throat> so if I factor this out, I can factor a two out and I'll get X plus three. If I factor the denominator, I'm going to get four X minus three. And so once it's factored, you go ahead and simplify, wherever you can simplify. For here, your two over four can be simplified, right? This can be divided by two, this can be divided by two to get you one half. And then you cannot simplify the binomials because they are not the same. You can't simply fact binomial, you can't simply simplify those x's because it's a binomial, which means this is together, okay? Again, if we were in class, I would break it down into smaller parts and show you why. But for now, we're just going to trust me. This would be my final answer. Okay? So you can only simplify the factors for this one outside because these are not the same. Number two, I'll show you when they are. So first thing I'm going to do here is factor my numerator and my denominator. My numerator is a quadratic trinomial, so I'm going to have two binomial factors. Here, I'm just going to factor out my 2, and I'll get x plus 4. All right? When I want to factor that numerator, the two factors of 20 that add up to 9 are x plus 4 and x plus 5. And so now, I'm going to simplify, just like... 4 over 4 is 1. x plus 4 over x plus 4 is also 1. So those factors become the identity and they cancel out. So then they become x plus 5 over 2. However, we're going to talk about the restrictions to a domain. Remember, we said we were going to talk about that, right? So restriction, restrictions right? It's all the things that x cannot equal. Remember our denominator can never equal zero. So our restrictions, they're always going to come from the factor form before it's simplified. So my restrictions to this function, would be x cannot equal, if I was to solve this, I would get a positive 3. And the, <clears throat> the answer is I take this x minus 3, set it equal to 0, I add 3 to both sides, and I'll get x equals 3. So for my domain, x cannot equal 3 because that's when this would equal 0. Here, my restrictions, x cannot equal a negative 4. So my final answer with my restrictions, right,
would be this answer with my restriction, this answer with my restriction. Questions? All Mm, I'm not going to do this one. Yes. Yep. All right, I'm gonna do this from this page. Sometimes you're gonna have the quadratic trinomials on the top and the bottom, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is factor it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have x, minus four x plus three. And on the bottom, I'm gonna have x uh, minus four x plus two. Yep. And so now <clears throat> I'm going to simplify where I can by using my ident identity property, right? These are the same for the identity property. So then I'm left with my x plus 3 on top, my x minus 2, sorry, plus 2 on the bottom. So here's my numerator, here's my denominator. My restrictions come from my factored form. So x cannot equal a positive 4 and a negative 2. So this is simplified. So my next problem, okay, we have a quadratic on top and we have a quadratic on the bottom. However, on the top we have a trinomial and on the bottom we have a binomial. So when I go to factor it, I'm gonna factor my numerator as such. My denominator, however, I'm still gonna have to factor a GCF out, which is going to be X. My factors up top are going to be a negative 4 and a negative 1. <clears throat> and so I'm going to simplify using an identity property where I can. It's going to be my 2x minus 4s. And then I'm going to have x minus 1 equals 0. Remember, this one is 0. And then x can't equal positive 4. And so this is simplified with my restrictions. Are we good? Questions?
All right, so we're gonna move on to multiplying. Multiplying, very similar to simplifying. However, there are now four things you must factor before you can be begin simplifying. I'm sorry, my smoothie was not smooth enough and the fruit is definitely still in my throat. All right, so when multiplying, how do you determine the restrictions? The restrictions come from the factors that are in the denominator. <clears throat> so it's whenever the denominator can equal zero. So they come from the denominator. So when you are multiplying, now everything in the numerator counts as everything in the numerator. Everything in the denominator counts as everything in the denominator. It is rules of multiplication. So if we remember back in algebra one, our properties of commutative property means multiplication, you can move anywhere, right? So because I can move it anywhere, I can also make this six on top of the 15 so that I can simplify it. And then when I factor this, I'm going to have a 5 and a minus 5. And then when I factor this, I'm going to have x minus 5 and x minus 4. And so everything on top in the numerator is still in the numerator. Everything on the bottom is still in the bottom on the denominator. Okay, so this is factor form. You don't necessarily have to move the 15. I did because I like my numerical values on top of my numerical values. Okay, so I'm gonna simplify my five and my 15 first, right? Five divided by five is one, so I'm gonna leave my six up top. 15 divided by five is three. I'm gonna simplify my x minus five and my x minus five. And on the bottom, I'm going to have my x minus 4. However, I can still simplify this 6 over 3 because 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I would have 2 over x minus 4 for my final answer. However, I need my restrictions. And my restrictions come from my original function in factored form. So my restrictions are when x cannot equal 5 and x cannot equal 4. That one was multiple steps, so I'm going to give you a minute. Why can't it equal 4? Because 4 is in the denominator. This is in the denominator, and this is in the denominator. So it can't be equal to 5, and it can't be equal to 4. 
It's whatever the zeros are in the denominator. Four is a zero in the denominator. All right, so I'm going to do another one of these. First thing I want to do is factor this. So if I factor this first binomial, I'm going to factor out a 6. I factor this one, I'm going to just leave it as 4x squared. And then I have times x cubed. And then I have 2 factored out. <clears throat> and so now I am going to reorganize this in order for me to see it better. Okay? I'm going to use the commutative property to move things around. So I have 6. I have x cubed. I have x minus 3. Does this better not be something echoey? Okay. And so on the denominator, I have 2, I have 4, I have x squared, and I have x minus 3. So all I did was take everything on the numerator, rearrange it, everything on the denominator, rearrange it. Because I just want my numerical factors out front. Then I want my mon monomial. Then I want my binomial. Hey, Charlie. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. I can't do anything with the 4. Then I have my x factors, right? So I, x to the 3 minus 2 gives me x to the 1. It's positive, so it goes in the numerator. These two factors are the same. You use the identity. And so now... <clears throat> I just need my restrictions. X cannot equal, so I look at my factored form and I look where X would be equal to zero. X can't equal zero. X can't equal a positive three. Questions? <clears throat> No, I'm giving notes now so you can write down the steps. The steps are to factor it and then to simplify. That's it. Factor and simplify. All right, I'm going to do another one of these.
All right, so division. Remember, you cannot divide by fractions, ever. So what you have to do is flip the reciprocal, okay? So I have x minus 5 divided by 6 is my first factor. My wall is still up. And instead of division, we're going to flip and multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply, and we're going to flip the second one. And so now I have another multiplication one, right? Just like before. I just have to factor everything out. So I have x minus 5 over 6 times 12 over two is my greatest common factor for that one, minus five. And again, I like to move things around, but that's me. You don't necessarily have to, but I'm gonna move my factor of 12 to make it right over my six and my two. And then I'm gonna move my x minus five over my x minus five. And I make sure that my binomials are together. So I know that 6 times 2 is 12. So together, these become my identity factors. I know that this is the identity factors. So technically, everything is the same on top of everything in the denominator. This is going to be equal to 1. This one's a tad bit confusing. It just means everything on the top is the same as everything on the bottom. So it's just equal to one. The restrictions come from the original function, right? And it's factored form. This is factored. So X cannot equal positive five. I don't believe there's one like this on the quiz at the end of the week. This is one of the harder ones. Oh, this is a nice one. Yes. I'm not done. You got nine minutes. All right. So again, this is the vision. So you have to make sure that you put the reciprocal, which would be. I'm going to make this almost four space. All right, so X squared minus five X minus six over five X plus fifteen times seven X plus twenty one over X squared minus three X minus four. 
Okay, so you want to always take your division problems and you want to multiply by the reciprocal, which just means flip the second one, right? And now I'm going to factor. So if I factor my numerator, I'll get x minus 6x plus 1. I factor that first denominator. I'm going to factor out a 5 and I'll get x plus 3. If I factor my numerator here, I'll get... Three, nope, I'll get seven x plus three. If I factor this denominator, I'll get x minus four plus one. Okay, so again, factoring, factoring, factoring. Remember, I said drill that into you, make sure you're good at it. I think only three people came after school to practice it. And so now I'm going to simplify all my identity factors. So I have x plus 1 and x plus 1. I have x plus 3 and x plus 3. It looks as if nothing else can be simplified. So now I'm just going to write what I have left. So on the numerator, I have a 7 and I have an x minus 6. I have a 5 and I have an x minus 4. Nothing else is left. None of these factors can be simplified, so this is simplified. Okay, however, I need my restrictions, and my restrictions come from my original function in factored form. So, my original function in factored form is here. So, x cannot equal negative 3, positive 4, and negative 1. my final answer. All right, I am done doing problems. What would you be able to write down the steps on class? Oh, no, I answer that. Okay, so I'm done answering, doing problems. However, I'm gonna leave this last five minutes or five and a half minutes for questions. What questions, what things don't you quite understand before I leave you to go try them? Again, if anyone cannot um, get onto big ideas, please let me know. I will be sure to post different practice for you. Again, it will be more practice than the practice on one big ideas, only because the ones on big ideas you can do five times before they're done. Any questions? Things you don't understand, things you would like for me to clarify. Please ask them now or forever hold your peace. No. All right, so if you think you're good, um, you can log off. You can rewatch it. I'm going to end the stream once everyone is logged off or what well, o'clock hits, whatever comes first. I am going to stay up here until 1 o'clock in case someone logs on and has a question. If you want to take a minute to review your notes and then come back and ask your question, that's fine too. I'm just going to sit here for a few minutes so that you have an opportunity to ask it a question, whatever it may be. I don't want you to feel like you can't. Mm -mm. Don't submit assignments late after the week is over. I'm not going back and grading anything after the week is over. It's not a thing, I'm not doing it. Once I do grades, that's it. I'm not going back.
Down to four people. All right, I am bobbing off. If you have trouble, you can ask questions via text or Google Classroom. Always remember that text is first. Um, Google Classroom does delay sometimes with my alerts, but you can grab it right now either or. Um, email, I think, also works. Okay, bye guys.